All right, everyone. Happy Thursday Bible study. How about we pray before we begin this? We'll be in the book of Psalms. If you want to go there in advance, we'll be in Psalm 1. I will read it to you so it's not necessary that you have it out. And the purpose of this Bible study is more to reflect than necessarily to study. So just keep an open heart and open ears as we pray and then begin Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Today we are in Psalm 1. Allow me to read this psalm. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Psalm 1 in the Revised Standard Version. As we go through the book of Psalms, we're going to follow a bit of format, a bit of a standardized format, sorry. I'm going to read one psalm, and then I will give a reflection on it, and then I will read a paraphrase I have written that hopefully makes the psalm a little bit more clear at the end. It is my own paraphrase, just so you know, so any mistakes are my own. So let's take a look at Psalm 1 here. Psalm 1 sets the theme for the rest of the book. It introduces the major problems and concerns and characters that we will see repeated over and over again. Characters like the righteous and the wicked. The psalm, specifically this one, speaks of two people, two paths and two ends. Those two that I mentioned earlier, the righteous and the wicked. Both of these will feature throughout the Psalms and really are the focal point of the Psalms. But what is it exactly that defines them? Who are the righteous and who are the wicked? Let's start with the wicked. There are many types of evildoers in this world and this Psalm has a bit of a variety. There are sinners and there are scoffers and there are the wicked, but they are all summarized by that last word, wicked, and they are defined as being evil in and of themselves. Their counsel is evil, their paths, their lifestyle is evil, and really, all that they are is evil. Well, what is this great evil that defines everything they do, say, and are? Well, it is that they are contrary to the righteous. So, in order to understand what the wicked are and who they are, we must understand who the righteous are because the wicked are not doing and are opposed to what the righteous are doing. So what are the righteous doing and who are they? The righteous are those who spend all day and all night meditating on God's law, meaning not just reading it, but also studying it and performing it. They are not necessarily sinless, but they are lovers of God's law. It is God's law that the wicked scoff at. It is God's law that they transgress and sin against, thereby becoming sinners. And it is in contradiction to God's law that they devise their life styles. It is because they do not follow God's law that they are defined as wicked. And there are various ways that they disobey God's law. Some of them laugh at God's law. Some of them simply don't follow it. But all of these are the same. Anyone who doesn't choose righteousness are those who are 
wicked, those to whom righteousness has no appeal. Now, when we think of it in this way, we may be tempted to think, well, what's the big deal with just having an alternative lifestyle, with just not doing some of the things that the Bible says? I mean, does every Christian themselves even follow everything the Bible says? But the wicked are not just making mistakes. Their whole life is in opposition to God's law. They are against Almighty God, the fountain of life, goodness itself, and all that is holy. To call a wicked lifestyle an alternative undermines exactly what it is, which is a decision to choose our own way instead of God's way. To deny God his divine right to be God of our lives. To deny his identity and in his stead to erect ourselves as the arbiter of right and wrong, to make ourselves God. You see, wickedness, friends, is never passive, nor is it ever guiltless. Consider that the wind and the sea and every disease and demon obeyed the word of Jesus. Even the animals of the Old Testament obeyed God from Balaam's donkey to the cows that carried the Ark of the Covenant back from the Philistines. Everything in this universe obeys God, except you and me, except mankind, except humans. Is that not a sin, friends? Is that not wrong? Doesn't that deserve punishment? And we add to that, we set up the no God as our idol. You see, at the end of the day, we don't even worship ourselves. We worship sinful passions and desires, lust, envy, greed, ambition, covetousness, pride. In other words, we worship sin and spend our lives chasing after sin, doing the devil's work and falling at his feet, declaring we prefer his work and his ways more than God's. So is not God right when he punishes? But to those who who do wickedness, they are so steeped in unrighteousness, and it's an attitude that infects even Christians. We would deny God's divine right to do as he will with what he has made. And ultimately, this psalm, it gives us glasses through which to understand our own human experience. The psalm is a window into life itself. In this life, this psalm is declaring there is a God who watches over the ways of men, and he is real. And those who trust in him shall flourish like a tree and be called righteous. And those who care not for him, they will perish, receiving their just reward. But let's be honest as well, once we've said all these things. Is it not true that the righteous do not always flourish? Is it not true that though this psalm says the wicked are like chaff, dead, blown about by the wind, that they seem rooted in this life with many possessions and great happiness? Does this mean that the psalm is wrong and that God's law has failed? Not at all. In fact, Psalm 1 has introduced one of the biggest themes we will see played throughout the book of Psalms, which is, why do the righteous suffer? and the wicked prosper, if in fact the righteous are meant to prosper and the wicked are not. We'll deal with that when it comes, but let's be clear, Psalm 1 is saying that there is a certainty of blessing for the righteous and a certainty of cursing, lack of reward for the wicked. So it is a real question this psalm sets up. Why is it that the wicked prosper? Why is it that Christians aren't just number one in every single thing if God is truly on our side. And as I said, this is something we will deal later with in the book of Psalms when it comes up. So I won't cheat and tell you the answer ahead. We'll deal with it as it comes and let the book of Psalms speak naturally to us. But I want to return to that question and that tension. I want to put it directly to us to really ask ourselves, do we feel prosperous? Do we feel like a tree rooted by living water, fruiting constantly? Does that superlative and absolute promise concerning the righteous ring true for you today? 
Well, if the answer is no, let me invite you with me to continually meditate on God's Word day and night so that perhaps we may understand our situation in light of God's Word. Blessed is the one who walks not, not in evil plans, not in evil ways, and not with evil. The one who day and night thinks of God's laws. For that one, like a tree with roots that drink deep, a tree that fruits and does not die, will not just do well, but do well. But the evil are withered, wretched, and dry, overpowered by wind. On the last day, they won't be able to stand. They won't be able to stand with the blessed. For God knows, anchors, and sustains the blessed, but the evil will wander with the wind to death. Psalm 1.